guys welcome back uh, so today I am going to show you how to make uh, what's called the drape mold uh, with this plate so we're gonna make this plate here um, but first we need to roll out a slab of clay something like this should be enough for a plate I would say so this is where this fabric really comes in handy so I'm just going to sort of flatten my clay a little bit. And then I have these two sticks here. So I just got these from the Bauhaus. Um, it came as a one big long one. And then I just cut it down. Um, they're half centimeter. Uh, and these are our thickness gauges. So just make sure that I don't roll a slab thinner than this. So I'm gonna put these on either side. And here I've got my rolling pin. And so I know that when the rolling pin is rolling on the gauges here, it won't make the clay in between any thinner than that. Just make sure that the body of the rolling pin stays on the thickness gauges. You can get these anywhere. And if you don't have these, just use rulers or use pencils. Just line them up on the either side. Just make sure that you have two things that are the same thickness. Anything will work. So here's my clay. I'm just going to set it in between and do a little bit of rolling. So I don't want to roll too much in one go. So each time I roll it, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm gonna flip it from the top right to the bottom left because not only am I flipping it this way, but I'm also turning the clay. So I'm just getting, I'm stretching the clay out in a bunch of different directions. I don't want to stress the clay, so I'm just going to like do it very systematically. So I'm doing just a little bit at a time. So if you have something like this here, you see this? This is actually a bubble. So I need to pop that. Don't want any bubbles in my piece. Just take a piece of something pointy, try and get the air out of that. Now I'm just rolling on the thickness gauges. Now I'm going to use my handy rib. Um, same thing as before, you could also use a credit card or whatever you need, but um, I want to smooth out the clay a little bit because it does have the, um, uh, the pattern of the cloth. And also this is compressing the clay, so it's going to make it much, much stronger when I do this. So now I have my slab and here is the fun part now because you can put patterns on your um, clay. So just wander around your house and uh, look for things with interesting patterns. So for example, bubble wrap would be an interesting pattern. You can see how that looks. I found this um, uh, soda stream bottle could roll this along and see how that looks and then I also have this very old sheet of very DDR glass uh, but we can see how that looks rolled out so so here I've got some bubble wrap um, just lay it down and see what kind of pattern we make Of interesting these little dots here <coughs> I can also try the glass so with glass I will probably lay down some fabric so it doesn't stick put fabric then I'll 
roll a uh, play directly into Careful again not to make your clay too thin when you do this. Very cool. Okay, so that's quite a nice kind of art deco pattern that we got going. So you can sort of see here, it pushed out a lot of that bubble wrap pattern, but there is a layering happening here. So you can definitely layer up your patterns. Um, you can also kind of freehand it. So like things like forks are really interesting for these types of things. So you can, you know, add layers, layers, as many layers as you want into the clay. Um, and they even make rolling pins with different motifs on it, or you can just take an old rolling pin and carve into it yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, it's really endless with the patterns. So you really don't need to buy anything for patterns because your house is probably just full of things. So use cloth, use, uh, you know, sides of your table, <laughs> use, uh, you know, whatever plant leaves. Lots of people use um, lace is a cool one. Um, yeah, just look around your apartment for different textures. So I got my beautiful rubber tree to donate a leaf. Oh, we have a little leaf pattern here. I didn't push too hard uh, because I didn't want to get rid of this pattern, but um, if you have a really veiny leaf, um, you can definitely get some nice veins and, and have it a lot more intensely leaf looking. I would think it'd be really cool to layer a bunch of leaves if you have some plants that don't mind donating their leaves or finding them on the street, um, just layering them up, that would be really cool. So enough about the patterns, let's make this into something. So before I put anything down on this plate, I will put some fabric over it. So this is just plain cotton scrap fabric from who knows what. Uh, just cover it with the fabric. And then I'm going to lay my plate. So you can do it either side up, doesn't matter. Um, just know that if you do it the other way, it's facing down, you will lose some of the pattern. So make sure it's a really strong pattern when you do that. I'm just gonna push it into the shape of the plate and uh, try and get that shape. And then, and then I will take my knife and start following the shape of the plate. So I'm just cutting off the excess here. You can be as precise as you want to be. I never really want to be that precise. I think long fluid motions always looks best and because I'm right-handed I'm turning it so that I can very comfortably cut at it versus trying to cut at an awkward angle. my plate. Later when it's dried out I'm going to remove it from the plate mold and I'm going to uh, smooth out the sides and uh, yeah and probably I'll have to smooth out the bottom a little bit but for now I'm going to leave this here for 
maybe an hour. Um, or of course you can wrap in plastic again and leave it overnight. So just a word about these molds. So for a slab, it's really easy to lay it flat like that and just push it in. Like you can stretch it out that much. But if you want to make this shape, you're going to be bending the slab a lot. So I wouldn't actually recommend this technique for something like a bowl. Um, I will show you a technique later that I rather recommend for this. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do, I would do this kind of slab technique for very shallow items. Hey guys, what's up? So I'm here to just finish up my plate. Um, it's been a couple of days actually. So my plate should be nice and um, firmed up. I was wrapping it quite well in the plastic, so it's actually okay to sit for a little bit of time. Um, yeah, this is actually quite a floppy still, so it's not so bad. Um, it can be anywhere from here to, um, you can also make it uh, if it's not so bendy anymore, that's also fine. Um, so long as it's holding its shape, it's okay. Now, all I need to do is smooth the edges. So I'm just gonna take a sponge and a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna go around those edges and smooth them out. Just trying to make them nice and soft, not sharp at all. This sponge I'm using here is actually a makeup sponge. And I posted another video, just last one, about um, pottery tool replacements. So if you have an old makeup sponge lying around, awesome, you can use it for this. If not, you can also just dip your finger in the water and kind of move your hand around nice and smooth. That's basically it. We just don't want any sharp points left over. So I would just go ahead and smooth that all out and check out my back. If I've got any weird bumpy bits, uh, I can smooth those out. For finishing up, I'm just going to leave it again with the cloth down on my plate and I'm just going to set the plate down in it, make sure it's lined up and then because this piece is still a little bit wet and floppy, I'm just gonna let it dry out uh, in the form itself. Um, I, if it was a little bit more hard, I could just leave it out of the form, uh, but if you find that it's losing its shape still, just go ahead and set it right back in the form, set it on your shelf and let it dry. And that's it, you have a nice little plate. Don't forget to sign your piece and write down the glaze that you want on the bottom. So, see you later.